All right, good evening, Aurora. It's seven o'clock on the 7th of May. This is Clayton Muhammad, spokesman for the city of Aurora. Welcome to another edition of our COVID community conversation. We appreciate your support these last three weeks, not just with these conversations, but just coming together as a community. We know that we're always Aurora strong, but for right now we're stronger at home. And through this process, we've seen such creativity develop and grow. And we're focusing on that creativity tonight through our Aurora Public Art Department that launched a COVID-19 PSA project. And the amazing, handsome, and beautiful faces that you see in front of you are those artists who did the designs. And tonight, they're here to share their inspiration and a little bit more about themselves. It's my pleasure to introduce you now, who will moderate the rest of the night, our fantastic and phenomenal and fabulous director of the Aurora Public Art. Please welcome Ms. Jen Evans. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, we were thinking at the public art departments, uh, you know, in March when this was getting started, how can public art participate in the efforts that everyone in the city is is trying to make? Um, how can we be relevant and um, engage and what can we do for artists? So we were thinking about the WPA program, the Works Progress Administration uh, after the depression in the 30s, where uh, muralists and all kinds of artists were hired, were paid to, um, to do public artworks. So we have done a little mini program like that. So just for kind of a tiny stipend and a, these, these sort of tiny projects, um, just to get started, we're supporting local artists. Uh, we got 62 uh, designs that came in. Our request for proposals went out April 9th and it, uh, it was only out for 10 days. So we got a lot of great design. All the designs were good, um, but for the scale of the project, uh, we were able to take 13. Uh, 11 of our artists uh, live in Aurora. Um, so we're uh, really excited to have all this local art kind of popping up. They are going to, the signs are, most of them are up already today, and they are in every ward, sort of spread out at high traffic locations. They're 24 inch high by 18 inch wide, so they're not too bad, big when you go through an intersection, but uh, hopefully you'll see some of these around. Uh, but they are also on our social media accounts for a free, of course, download and print that you can put in your front windows or, or wherever you like. Um, on Facebook and on Instagram, we are Aurora Public Art. And then we also have a page on the City of Aurora website where all of those are uh, for download to print as well. Um, and our social media has our website address. That's probably the easiest way to find it. So we wanna welcome uh, 10 of the 13 artists who have taken some time out of their evening to talk to us a little bit about the designs that they submitted. And uh, thank you all so much uh, for participating in this tonight. All right, so our first artist that I would like to talk who uh, is Laura Reyes. And we're just going to see Laura's design here. There we are. Okay, so Laura, why did, uh, why did you decide to enter a design for this project? I think like seeing the post, I really wanted to use like the skills that I've learned uh, to be able to help the community like with something that I create like if if my artwork can just help like one person and like here in Aurora at all like that makes me really happy I think that's great that's what this project is all about too is artists have these great skills these really important voices and unique perspectives so that's that's wonderful. I'm happy to hear that. Um, what kind of arts background do you have, if any? Um, well, I've always done art as a kid. <laughs> I 
I think a big time in my kid life was when the Beacon News would uh, like they'll let you submit like kids would draw like the weather. So I drew like a partly cloudy day and they accepted it and they put it on the newspaper. So I was like, oh my God, it's me. <laughs> so I think that like really motivated me to continue art and I'm studying art at Wabansi right now. That's great. Yeah, all those opportunities are so good. I'm, it's so exciting to inspire and motivate, especially young people with those, with those even pretty small projects. That's so great. Um, and tell us about your design. Uh, so this is a digital piece, but I always start off like sketching my ideas for some paper. Um, so then I, so when I have the sketch, I take a picture of that on my phone. And what's really cool with digital art, you can do like layers. So mm -hmm. I put the, the sketch as like the first layer. And then I do another layer and then do the, like the cleaner lines. And then I do color. And then at the end, I like to put like a paper texture to sort of like bring back that like sketch so it doesn't seem like so harsh if that yeah yeah <laughs> well i love it thank, thank you, you so much thank you, thank you. Uh, next i'd like to introduce sean dooley yes hello <laughs> hi sean hey so, uh thank you so much for taking time to talk to us um why did you decide to enter a design into this project? Well, I, I, I saw the post, uh, somebody shared the post, um, and I thought that'd be a, a fun idea to, to play around with some design ideas. And I, I like the idea of the message being something positive. Um, I guess it, as a, in my, my mid-century years, uh, positivity is um, a little more important to me now than it used to be. But uh, so I, I thought it'd be fun to try this out and come up with something. I'm so glad that you did. Um, I have to say that when I was putting these out today at intersections, that this particular design really pops. So uh, I'm digging the size of the lettering and the in the contrast. I love I love this design. Um, can you tell us about this design specifically? Uh, yeah, um, I've always been a big fan of, of comic books, sci-fi and fantasy, and this was one of the first ideas I had to come up with something comic book related with a superhero. So, I, this is all done in Photoshop. Um, I, uh, I I use Photoshop quite a bit, and um, I actually kind of stole from myself here <laughs> um the the background city design was a uh for a poster design i did a while back and i was like oh i've got a cityscape and then uh the superhero was uh from a project i did uh, a couple years ago that was never used and i i, I, I hand drew it and it was based on a, a stock image i found and I inked it in and scanned it into the computer cleaned it up and i i like playing around with the, the halftone patterns to make it look like a vintage comic book the little uh yeah. like the the wear and tear on it so that i i like there's some ben day kind of dots stuff. in there what's that is that ben day dots in the ben the ben day dots from uh comics and newspapers of old oh yeah yeah, yeah yes yes yeah i love yeah. it i like that you're breaking the plane too I, coming I, out i always like things that overlap and look like they're bursting out of whatever the, the frame yeah. or the, the panel i I always I love playing around with that. So that's great. Um, so, do you have an arts background, or I've been drawing since I was a kid, uh, and it was just always pencil and paper. As in about the late '80s, early '90s, I got involved in theater, uh, theater downtown Aurora, the Riverfront Playhouse, and I started doing the posters uh, and the programs. And I I got software that allowed me to do that better. And uh, I started playing around with that. I, uh, I have uh, probably an unhealthy relationship with Photoshop. <laughs> I, I use it a lot and I just wanted to learn as much as I could. And I love just, it gave me the opportunity to just learn and play around and try different things and come up with different designs and styles. 
then, uh, you know, as I went on, I started doing uh, some sculpting, mold making, and then painting actually with Art Bar in downtown Aurora. I just, that was the first time I really started doing any kind of painting. And so I just, that's really my background, just trying it, see what I like and trying to get better at it, trying to always improve my skills. That's great. I think the most important thing in art is play and experiment. Yeah, there, there are no rules and that's why I like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time and for submitting a, a design and your participation. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Jen Keller. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Jen. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So uh, what possessed you to submit a design to this project? Possessed me. Um, well, actually, my friend Laura, who is in this group, Laura Lynn, let me know about it. And I was like, oh, I would like to do that. Um, I, I always see the public art opportunities and it never seems to like the stars don't seem to align. I'm either working on something else or you know, and this one came and I was like, you know, I want to be a part of that. This is kind of important. So I decided to uh, to hunker down and submit something. <laughs> Why did you feel like it was important? Um, important? Well, because I just feel like, you know, um, right now there's so much out of our control and out of my control, but out of everyone's control. And you know, you see all these other helpers out there, the nurses, doctors, you know, essential workers. And you know, when you're an artist, you're like, how can I help? Well, part of it exactly. is to lift people's spirits, you know, and you know, give them something to smile about or think about or, you know, whatever it is. So yeah. Yeah. So your message is is speaks to what you just said be right. safe be healthy just be yeah can you tell us about your your design and your statement yeah um well when i was thinking about what to do i was thinking about um your mental health right like how can we survive mentally at this time um because that's a huge thing we hear a lot about you know your physical health which is also which is like huge right you know but um yeah so the biggest thing for me i was thinking about was thinking about your you know getting through the day and what is going to help you and, and we live such a crazy busy lifestyle that right now maybe this might be a time you know to just just be like take a moment and just relax and just exist and there's nothing wrong with that right and uh, um, the artwork was actually originally i did for inktober years ago and it's actually mm. a teeny tiny ink drawing so um it's probably about two you know two inches by two inches oh um, wow yeah so uh when i w when i initially wanted to do the 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 um the poster i immediately thought of this image like it was the first i was like you know i should really use that the word was tranquil i was like i should really use that Image because I couldn't get the the phrase. I had a conversation with a friend of mine. We were talking about the kids not being in school and everything, and we were like, you know, sometimes it just gives them the opportunity to just be. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a, a, a cool thing to think about. And I immediately thought of this imagery. And uh, the original had no color or anything, and no text or anything in it. And uh, so I just kind of brought some more life to it. it yeah, and I think that <laughs> idea of of mental health and putting out these positive you know ideas and encouragement is so important coming right. from artists because we're a sensitive bunch <laughs> who are paying attention and observing subtleties more uh carefully than i think average yeah um so i think that you know the perspectives are really important um so uh can you tell us just a little bit about your art background? Yes. Um, well, much like everybody else has said so far, of course, I've been an artist since I was born. I'm sure my parents can tell you stories of me drawing on things I shouldn't have. You know, it's just kind of always been who I am. And then uh, earlier in my creative career, I worked in theater as a costume designer. And I was a costume designer for, I don't know, close to 10 years in Chicago. I worked all the different houses in the city 
the big theaters, the little theaters, the storefront theaters. And then I took a little break and then I ended up uh, moving to California and actually getting a master's degree in uh, traditional illustration through the Academy of Art in San Francisco, which was oh, wow. an amazing experience. It was cool just to live in a different state. And, and then since then I've been working as an illustrator. I've done educational publishing, I've done greeting cards, I've done um, all sorts of different illustration and that has sort of morphed into different other work. Like you said, you know, like things change, right? So, you know, I do pet portraits now. I have my own line of um, nursery art and uh, like I said, greeting cards, I do commissions and I'm just a jack of all art trades. <laughs> Well, thank you for participating in this. No, and thank you. This was a, it's a great opportunity. It was, it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Um, next, I would like to introduce Laura Lynn. Um, also, I'm having such a good time talking to all of you that I think that I need to um, speed it up just a tiny bit. <laughs> so, Laura, are you on? Yep, here. There you are. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so thank you so much for participating. Um, what made you want to uh, submit a design to this project? Well, number one, I love contests. So that's fun for me. <laughs> I've been, I think as an artist, I think a lot of people have been, a lot of us have been entering contests. And I think like, I think Laura had said it, that it keeps us motivated and keeps us going sometimes. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is I just like the opportunity to help. And I like what Jen said about, you know, we think about the nurses and the really important workers out there, the grocery store workers. And as artists, this is our little way of helping. And pictures along with words have a much stronger impact. So I think, um, it's great to, that you did this project for Aurora. It's, it's really cool to, to see and, and hopefully it'll help people. Yeah, thank you. Um, and let's talk about your design. I, I like the message that you, that you are expressing here. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, so the hang in there actually came from, I read this post about people in Italy making signs that translated to in English to hang in there mm -hmm. and uh, they used rainbows but I like the idea the imagery of a butterfly just being in a cocoon and I feel like that's kind of where we are right now still mostly staying home and and doing what we can do to um, just kind of be calm and safe in our little home cocoons um, until we can go out again and hopefully become maybe different people, maybe better people. I, it's also inspired by that Kitty O'Meara poem. I, I just love that. I don't know if anyone um, knows it, but it, it starts out and the people stayed home and read books and, and when the danger passed, the people joined together again and uh, dream new images, created new ways to live. And, and some, it goes on like that. It's a little long, but if you have time to look it up, I, I really love that. And I think that has also inspired the, the piece. I don't know that poem, but it sounds beautiful. If you could send that, if you could email me a link to that, I could share it on our page because I think that's um, that's really relevant. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, and then lastly, can you give us just a little information about your background and uh, your career now? Sure, so I've always been interested in art. Um, I went to school at the, at actually originally from Wisconsin. So I went to school at UW-Milwaukee, the Peck School of Arts for Painting and Drawing. And after that, I worked as um, unofficially uh, art, therapy, art therapy place. I worked in a gallery. I worked, uh, I did some volunteer work. I was a secretary for a local arts council, Pewaukee Area Arts Council. And um, now, I, I worked in the corporate world for a while. Um, when I had my son, I stayed home with him. And after about a year, I started back up in art. And uh, it's been lately going, well, was, before the pandemic was going pretty well, I was, I was getting a lot of mural jobs and um, a lot of opportunities. So it's, um, it's, been, it's been good. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Next, I would like to introduce Sofia Graciasic. Sofia, are you on? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Okay. So, Sofia, what inspired you to uh, participate in this? Um, well, first, my art teacher is very like supportive in my art and she uh she um suggested uh the art and i was like and i thought it was really cool to like just help with the community so i first just started sketching out things and looking up pictures to get inspiration and i did a few sketches and finally chose one and submitted that one and i yeah Awesome job. Um, so, um, so you kind of started telling us about your design already. Was there, a, what was it that you liked about this one best? Because you said you did a few of them? Yeah. Um, first, some of them, I just like, um, some of them were a bit too small and the mm -hmm. words were too like they were um, up too high and they were mm -hmm. too small. So, and if we were and if we were going to put them up places, I would wanted to them the words to be big. Exactly. So, <laughs> Very yeah. smart. Yeah, and this is great. I like how you know you've got this great contrast of the bright red lettering on the light blue background. And then you've got the person in the foreground and then you've got the grass of like the middle ground and then you've got the tree in the background. This is great design. I really love it. So you're a student, right? What grade are you in? Uh, fourth grade. Awesome. You are a great artist and thank you so much for participating. You're it welcome. has been a delight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Next, I'd like to introduce Andy McCann. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. All right. So, like, uh, like we're asking everybody, what uh, what inspired you to participate in this project? I saw the contest posted on Facebook, and um, it's just kind of design is something I'm interested in and and enjoy doing. So, I I wanted to go ahead and, uh, you know, take take part in it. And um, I just like the message of, uh, or the idea of Aurora artists kind of coming together to support the community and kind of show that, um, that you know, we're kind of all in this uh, together. And um, so, yeah, I was happy to, to be able to take part. I'm glad you did, thank you. Can you tell us about this specific design at all? Yeah, so the the city skyline there was actually something I had done a few, uh, maybe about a year ago. Um, I I commissioned an artist to do it, so um, I'm kind of more of a graphic designer. Um, so I had that done and it, it had been selling it uh, at Wickwood House in Aurora. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but uh, so yeah, I took that image and then um, I just I like the idea of uh, you know something fairly simple and you know my my wife told me that the kind of shared with me the rainbow uh, you know having been used around the world for uh, you know, that symbol of togetherness and so I kind of incorporated that and um, you know just wanted to kind of have the uh, Spanish. A word there for togetherness to show that you know we're kind of all one city and doesn't matter if we're uh, you know uh, English speaking or Spanish speaking or whatever we're all kind of uh, in this together here. Yeah I, <clears throat> that's great. Can you uh, tell us just uh, very briefly what your day job is? <laughs> yeah I'm actually a uh, middle school math and science teacher so I've taught a couple of uh, Jen's kids and um, 
at, uh, yeah, I'm at Jewel Middle School, so um, I'm not a traditional uh, artist in that sense, but uh, my grandpa and my great uncle were actually uh, graphic designers in, in, uh -huh. Aurora, in Aurora. So they had an office uh, downtown on Stolp. And then my dad joined them and kind of turned it into a commercial photography. Uh, so he, he did commercial photography for a lot of companies in Aurora for years. Um, so they, uh, they kind of, you know, I, I guess inspired me to, to kind of be a, you know, a graphic designer on the side. So that's really great. I, um, I was pleasantly surprised to see your <laughs> submission. I didn't know that you did that. Yeah, so I, I, I enjoy it and um, like I helped, uh, I designed the logo for Wickwood House. So if, uh, oh, if you, if that's you great. see that, that's one of my, one of my designs and um, it's something I, I really enjoy doing and I, I love supporting the Aurora art community. So I, I've actually bought pieces from Chris and Laura Lynn and um, yeah, so it's cool to, to be kind of included with uh, with them in this. Oh, well, thank you for participating in all these different ways. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Teresa Fien Millies. Hello. Hello, Teresa. So um, as I think that we're sort of running a little bit low on time, I'd kind of like to ask you uh, first, if you could tell us about the process of of this design yeah, and absolutely. maybe your inspiration for it. Sure, um, well, the inspiration for it is, um, you know, there's a lot of feelings of isolation. We're all in our houses and trying hard not to leave. And um, I have to be reminded that we're doing this for a reason, even though we can't see exactly what's happening because we're, you know, we're so focused in our, in our own homes. Um, you know, we're, staying separate so that we can be together later. It's something that we're doing together as a community for each other. Um, the process is I'm a fiber artist, I quilt. So this is quilted. What I did was I quilted, I see, that's the A. Oh, I, nice. I quilted the word separate. And then I realized I was gonna run out of background fabric. So I just did the other letters, see how the, the E's are all the same. And so I didn't run out of fabric and then I put it in Photoshop and then yeah. I kind of quilted with Photoshop. So all the letters are quilted. They're just put together with a computer. <laughs> so all the rest are yeah. here. I love that. <laughs> Improvise. Together the analog and the digital in a, in a new way with fibers. That's so great. Yep. Um, and uh, so, can you tell us just a little bit about uh, about your art background and what yeah. you're up to? Um, I am not, I never, I've never taken an art class ever. I sat with my grandma and my aunts and my mom and I learned how to crochet when I was like six. I started quilting about 10 years ago. I, anything that has to do with fabric, I either have tried it or have figured it out. Um, I love crocheting, I love quilting and I just do it a lot. And I mess up a lot, so I figure it out as I go. And um, have you done any pieces that we might have seen? Yes, um, I've done installations downtown. Um, if you've seen anything colorful on the fence on the corner of Stolp and Downer in the last week or so, or in the last couple of years, I've made all those, the butterfly, the spiders, um, the rainbow that's up now, those are all mine. I love it. Thank you for doing that for us. Thank and thank you for participating in this project. Thanks for letting me. You are appreciated. <laughs> um, next, I'd like to introduce Stephanie um, Mangan. Mangan. Mangan, thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, what was the inspiration for your design? Well, actually, when I saw your original post, uh, one of the requirements was to um, depict the diversity in a, the city of Aurora. And I just wanted to use a graphic that um, represented everyone here. I'm, 
I'm just really thrilled to live in a place and raise my children in, in a place that has so many different types of people and cultures. So I just wanted to find something that that would include everyone instead of seclude people because there are a lot of people who might be alone right now. So I just wanted everyone to feel represented. And well, when they saw my sign, I just wanted them to feel like this was for them. I love it. I love it. That's one of my favorite things about Aurora too. Uh, my kids went to McCleary and uh, up to that point, uh, 82 languages had been represented at McCleary. Uh, with the refugee program and uh, I love it. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about your art background? I don't really have an art background, um, although I think that uh, being an artist is a state of mind. If you think you are, you are. Um, but I've been fortunate enough in my um, careers to have uh, jobs where I can um, I can make flyers and posters and invitations and um, just be able to, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, just be able to work with graphics and have some fun with graphics and, you know, pull some things together and uh, be a part of this wonderful program that we have out there now. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have two more artists. Uh, I'd like to introduce Juan next. Pantoja. Hi. Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. So Juan, tell us about Andy Aurora. <laughs> okay. Um, he was originally designed by the then treasurer of Aurora and someone from the Beacon News. I can't remember their names right now. I'm sorry. Uh, in 1964, and what people would do from Aurora is they would take it on trips, uh, such as vacations or outings, and they would take a picture uh, hanging Andy. Um, oh, wait, and maybe hand. if our, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, if our, yeah. uh, some of our viewers don't know, Andy Aurora is the, is the A with the face and the arms and legs here. Right. All right. Yeah. Back to you. Um, yeah, so they would take it and the original graphic says, I'm from Aurora and I'm proud of it. Um, I originally saw that in high school and I really liked the concept. When I was first doing this on my computer, I felt like the original uh, design I was doing wasn't relating to Aurora at all. And I felt like that would make the piece really strong. So I went back and redid the whole thing and made it about the community itself instead of just being a design for design's sake. I think that this is such a powerful design and people who have been in Aurora long enough to know who Andy Aurora is. Um, it's, this is really exciting. I think it, it kind of has the, the power of um, how masks have been put on some of the sculptures downtown, the yeah. fireman and the Marie Wilkinson by the library. Um, I think that this is so universal for Aurora. <laughs> universal for yeah. the local so yeah um can you tell us just uh in under a minute what <laughs> is your design uh background or uh you know your connection to the arts uh i think design and art and i were always meant to be and i think that i'll always have a aspiration to be one of the best if not the best um I'm a graphic designer. Uh, I do logos for businesses and individuals. Uh, it's on my website. Uh, if you, any of you would like to inquire about uh, my availability. Uh, I also do abstract paintings like the one right here. Um, I do commissions. Uh, I originally did the contest just to try something new and challenge myself, but hearing some of the other artists say that they do murals and like postings uh, in public uh, art, uh, in Aurora, I'd love to do that uh, as well. Keep in touch. Yeah, for sure. Let's get you out there. Thank you so much, Juan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And lastly, I'd like to introduce Chris Hodge. Love this one. Hello, how's it going? Hello, Chris Hodge. <laughs> All right, so can you tell us about your design? 
Sure. You know, it actually is based a little bit on old World War II posters. I've always been a fan of those. And when I heard about this competition, I immediately thought of those. And um, there's a little bit of a personal connection as well. Um, back when the whole thing started, I saw a friend at a store and we kind of had this awkward shake, don't shake kind of thing where we went for a shake and then stopped because of remembering <laughs> that we can't do that right now. And that's sort of uh, what's being exhibited in this drawing right here. He's uh, kind of in between like going for a handshake and then turning that into a wave uh, after he pulled it back. But then I have like this slogan, don't shake. There's a lot at stake, which a lot of those old World War II posters would have kind of catchy slogans that went with them. Yeah. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> this is great. Um, so, I mean, that sort of explains your uh, sort of inspiration for, for the design. Um, look how you work that right in there. Um, can you can you give us a very brief uh, word on what it is you do in your art background? Yeah, um, well, you know, I a lot like the other artists. I've always been drawing. I can't remember a time when I wasn't. I had great experiences in school, elementary school, high school. I had fantastic teachers and. Um, I went to Obanzi Community College. I went to West Aurora High School. Uh, so I've been very local. Uh, and then when I went to um, North Central College, I got an art degree there. And now I'm an art teacher. So, you know, I kind of took that inspiration from so many great teachers I've had in the past and decided to turn that into uh, to a career. Well. Or a lifestyle, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> Chris's work is incredible. Uh, a lot of line work, and if you've seen art in Aurora, uh, it's uh, a lot of these art artists have been at Art Bar, at Two Brothers, um, different pop-up galleries. Uh, Chris, I've definitely seen a ton of your work all over the place. We were at Water Street together in Batavia. Yeah, yeah we had studios not far. Way far. back, yeah, seven, six years ago. Um, but. Wait, there was one more thing. Yeah, I forgot. I've never met anybody who doesn't like Chris Hodge. Oh, well, appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you so much. Thank you for your time and waiting, waiting and waiting to go save the best for last. Just kidding, you're all the best. Um, <laughs> so we had three more, uh, three more designs that came in um that we got to print out that you can that you can print out at home and kind of find around these intersections uh you can see those here i love all of these designs but i really am digging that little kid telling you to stay home <laughs> you guys can see that all right lastly uh if you would like to, uh, our viewers, we are doing a kind of a contest, quarantine creations. So what are you making at home? Any media, you know, post it online, post it to Instagram, post it to uh, Facebook and um, hit it with these hashtags. And we will uh, be drawing, we'll have a raffle on June 1st uh, for a Dick Blick gift card. Um, so art, poetry, music, whatever, whatever you're up to, um, post, post what you're doing and share it with people and, uh, and tag it with this and we'll throw you in the raffle. Um, and then I think we have just a couple minutes uh, if anybody has any questions uh from online or jen this is clay do we have one question uh they want to know to the artist you know, those of you who've studied it and and uh you know, live in it what advice do you give to new or emergent artists to really get into the field that is a big question we have a lot of artists uh uh Anybody want to jump right in there? Oh, 
Oh, I guess I could answer that. Wait, can you repeat the question? <laughs> for, uh, for the artist, what advice do you give to new or emerging artists to really get into the field? Be honest, make your work, make work about what you know. Look at what everybody else is doing. Look at art history. Look at what's around you. Look at interesting shapes as you're walking down the street. Notice composition, you know, uh, in just like garbage around, you know, the, there's design everywhere. But then don't rip anybody off and don't try to be something that you think is cool or better than you. There's only one you. So just be honest and raw and keep practicing um, and share it because art, ha it's a conversation. So half of it is the making and the other half of that conversation is the experiencing that communication that you're putting out. So uh, yeah, that's what I would say. Wonderful. I, I would uh, echo Jen's uh, point about being just honest with yourself and uh, as a someone who appreciates art a lot um, you know the, the more I learn about artists the more I uh, see that everybody has their own voice and uh, not all uh, I, I think especially I see in my students they get stuck in this idea that uh, if they can't draw a photorealistic uh, you know, animal or whatever it is that they're trying to do, um, they, they're a bad artist. And that, you know, I, I try to encourage them that uh, there's thousands of different types of art and you just have to kind of find uh, your your lane and what, what you enjoy and what, uh, you know, what you're, you're good at and keep practicing that and developing that. Yeah. Can I throw something in too, Jen? What? Can I throw something in too? Yeah, please. Um, you know, just like echoing what you guys said about like getting your stuff out there and sharing work, you also want to make connections. And some of your best connections are other artists. Artists are a great community. They help each other out. They bring attention to opportunities that might be helpful to you. So, you know, really it's helpful if you get into that community and start talking with people. Absolutely. Networking is critical. Also, be nice. <laughs> like Nobody wants to deal with artists who are difficult or have a huge ego or um, we, we just want to work with people who are nice. <laughs> so be nice to your network. I have something to you, if, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. So they say when you open up a business and if you're asking about how to make money at art, it's kind of like opening up your own business. I mean, it, it, they say it takes about four years to be profitable. I've been working about, well, since 2013, I kind of started working on this style and just this last year, I am just starting to see probably a, a little, a little bit more of a profit, not nothing to live on, but it's, it just takes a lot of work, a lot of knowledge about business, like reading books about um, the business of being an art. Like there's Art Inc. There's um, the Artist Handbook. There's so, there's a lot of books out there now. And when I went to college, there was nothing. I don't think there was any, there were any books on it at all. So, um, but you're lucky. There's a lot of, there's a lot of resources out there right now. Plus apply to contests. I mean, there's, a lot of ways to get yourself out there. Um, definitely have an Instagram and Facebook account. There's um, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, so uh, patience, uh, patience and consistency. So I think we need to wrap it up here. I would like to thank the city of Aurora for supporting this program, um, the mayor for supporting this program. I'd like to thank Clayton and the mayor's office of communication. Thank you to city council for your input on the project. Um, and I don't know, can I thank public art? Thanks to the public art department. And thank you to all of the artists who participated, especially those of you who were able to participate this evening. Thank you so much. And back to you, Clayton. Jen, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for keep helping to keep 
art alive in the City of Lights. Again, on behalf of the mayor, we thank all of the artists, thank everybody, uh, the thousands who have tuned in to watch over this last 45 minutes. We look forward to continuing these conversations. And as we wrap up each one, we are Aurora Strong, but for right now, we're stronger at home. Take care, everybody, and thanks a lot. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.